for me, what I think I'm animated by is this sense of tension between the idea of North, what Glenn Gould called the idea of North, and the actuality of the North. And as a Canadian who grew up reading the history and the geography and all of that, I had one set of ideas about the North. And then as a visitor, I recognized that, the, that what the place is is so different from that, is so much more than that, and is so much richer than that. And yet there's still the richness in the narrative that you've received as well. So the tension between those two things inspires a lot of my work. Under the northern lights Oh, what an awesome sight uh, The North is profound, it's peaceful, it's welcoming, it's joyful, uh, it's fantastically beautiful, it's breathtaking all kinds of things rolled into one. The North is peopled, cultured, central. Vast it is, you know, how spread out, you know, over such huge, huge areas of land. Because it's quiet and peaceful and it's beautiful. Like, we have no trees, but you can see far. I know for a fact that it's spiritual, that it's welcoming at the same time, very harsh. I kind of jumble, I guess, in my images of the North um, between my idea of what I think the land might be and then actual stories that I've heard from people who are from there. I think the word I would use to describe the North is home. I feel like David's intention for this project is that it, it is really geared towards a settler audience. And so in that context, my hope is that it opens up spaces for discussion, it opens up uh, space for communication, new ideas, and uh, dialogue. I hope the Southerners will take away the sense of welcoming, a sense of respect for the land, for the people, and a sense of understanding why it is the way it is. A little bit of awareness and education, but it's also an understanding. I find when people understand each other, um, they can go a lot further. And so I do want people to understand that Inuit are strong. Inuit are fantastic negotiators. <laughs> Inuit have a love of life and culture um, that's matched by no other. Um, and it's really important for Canada to understand that. It's, that's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the timing of this show is really important because it's coming on the heels of the Truth and Reconciliation. And part of working in collaboration with David Newland and his band is actually part of our Truth and Reconciliation because, again, it's impossible to think that every Canadian can meet an Inuk person uh, or understand us in, in an in-depth way. So without giving some context, so part of the music is a way for Canadians to kind of get a peek into the culture and hopefully inspire to learn more. Shall it's be. a snapshot of what we want to portray of what the Arctic is, spirit land, people, environment, and most of all, the sharing nature of Inuit, it's different. You know, I'm told, well, you can just go buy groceries. Why can't you just live the way we do? Because if I stopped doing the things I do, what I've grown up with, I'd be denying the very existence of my parents, of my grandparents, my ancestors, you know? And so that's why I still do what I do even if it's tough. Muskox stew made for you. Better try a little homemade muskox stew. A lot of what this show is is showing the differences between kind of some of the beliefs around how we live and who we are to what we actually are because our voices are a big part of the show. The biggest thing I think I see in terms of the South is that to a large extent, 
we're making up our story as we go along. And sometimes that story runs counter to the landscape. And so we have a history here of opposition to the land or disruption against the land. And what I see in the Arctic and what I see among indigenous peoples around the world is that the history derives from the land. I'm really glad to, to see something like this that is, that is you know, tying together all the different narratives of the land and its people and its history, you know, for, for a lot of folks who, like myself and many others, you know, down, down here, down in the south, <laughs> uh, you know, we, uh, you know it's, it's like a foreign world to us. Accompanying southerners on a journey of where we come from, of the of what is up there, which is a totally different world. Coming here to a city, everything's fast-paced. Sometimes people forget to stop and just look around and feel the day. And it's, it's ongoing all the time up north. You have to be aware. You're on survival mode all the time or else you perish, you lose yourself. And a way of sharing music, stories, is to keep someone grounded, to know where they come from. That's how I see music. I grew up thinking I was a northerner because I grew up north of Parry Sound, Ontario, which is barely above the 45th parallel, hardly closer to the North Pole than the equator. Millions of Canadians live closer to the equator than the North Pole. And I think that it was sort of my mythic compass that was pointing that way. And then to go to the place and, and realize the extent to which that's a mythology. Not that it's not true, but that it's a, it's a story that guides our actions. And then to go, right, how do we make good on that? What does it mean? If we're going to call ourselves Northern people, we have one way forward that legitimizes that. And that is through relationship. That is through relationship with the Northern peoples whose land this all is. And, and when it comes to the far north, that's Inuit. Yeah, my compass points everywhere. I'm a lover of home. I'm a lover of the Arctic. But I love everything. I love traveling. I love learning different cultures, you know. And that comes from being proud of where I come from. You know, being so proud of my rich culture and my ancestry that I want to learn other cultures. So I travel as much as I could and learn different things from around the world. And so my compass points everywhere. It's a great gift to be able to collaborate with Inuit artists. I think anywhere you go and get inspired by, you want to work with the artists of that place. And I've been fortunate always to travel on the ships with Inuit who are proud ambassadors for their, their lives, their place, their language, their way of being in the world. And I knew that if I was going to speak about that place, you know, there's a rule, nothing about us without us, right? So if I was going to speak about that place, I felt I had the, I felt I had the right to speak to the Canadian mythology, because that's what I've received and been immersed in. But if I'm going to try to point that mythology toward an actuality that is, that is about Inuit culture and sense of place and presence, that has to be collaborative. Music is probably the easiest way to speak to Canadians and so this collaboration with David and his band has been an interesting process because typically if we collaborate as throat singers we do our own thing and musicians kind of play on top of us finding our beat and in this case we heard the music and were inspired by what kind of throat songs fit into that music so it's been an interesting process because I don't necessarily concern myself a musician and yet have found ways to collaborate with what I see as real musicians. I wish people understood that Inuit are we're not, we're not a large population. There's about 65,000 Inuit in Canada. 
but we own or control or have a say in over 40% of the landmass. And so listening to Inuit um, and working with Inuit for a better future is the way to go. Well, let's just say I would like to be a part of a way forward in which we build better relationships. Across the board, we build better relationships in this nation for, for, for newcomers, southerners, northerners, you name it. And I think fundamentally it comes down to relationships with the land and relationships with the people of the land, the people whose place this has always been. That's, that's where the hope lies. Canada's hope lies in its relationship with First Peoples. Fundamentally. Thank you.